Uh, hello, 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 everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Um, my name is Lindelane Klaba. I am an accelerator and pipeline manager at the Toilet Board Coalition. I am based in South Africa. So I guess the at this point, the question uh, becomes, um, really, what are we uh, what are we are we doing here today? Why are we holding this session? Um, we are holding this session to share more information about the accelerator program um, from uh, from the Toilet Board Coalition. Uh, we will also uh, hear from uh, our alumni who have completed uh, our program, as well as our 2023 cohorts who will share about uh, their journey of um, growing their businesses and the support that they have um, received and are currently receiving from uh, the Toilet Board Coalition. Uh, another thing that we will be able to uh, do today is to cover uh, any questions uh, that you may uh, you may have. Uh, please feel free um, to write these questions down in the comment section, and we will uh, deal with them. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So, on screen right now, uh, you will see. Um, the accelerator team uh, that consists of uh, five members from the toilet board coalition uh, from four uh, different um, countries a in, in that are in asia uh, africa and uh, latin america um, then uh, the next thing that will happen is you will hear from uh, the entrepreneurs as i have mentioned um, so far as the toilet board coalition we have supported around 58 entrepreneurs since uh, 2016 um, and four of them um, will be sharing about their journeys um, uh, today uh, thank you next slide so at this point i would like to invite uh, my colleague aishwarya to uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, the accelerator program thank you so much lindlani uh, so yes, I'm Aishwarya, Accelerator and Investment Manager here at the Toilet Board, and uh, I'm based in Hyderabad, India. So the Toilet Board is a non-profit organization, uh, and we founded in 2015 by our founding members, uh, Kimberly Clark, Lixel, and Unilever. Uh, our purpose is very simple. We accelerate business solutions to the sanitation crisis. Next slide, please, Evelyn. So from being founded uh, back in 2015, we have now grown to over 80 members who you can see on the screen. Uh, we have our corporate members starting from, you know, Kimberly Clark, Lixel, Unilever, our DFI members, uh, Tufsud, our DFI members, USAID and Aqua for All, uh, following which our partnership council um, of expert organizations in putting into our programming. And of course, we've supported over 58 entrepreneurs through our accelerator program. Um, supporting them on an ongoing basis. Next slide, please, Evelyn. Uh, so now uh, coming to the main part, which is our flagship program, the Accelerator. So we have built the world's leading accelerator dedicated to scaling sanitation economy businesses. Uh, so this is a one-year program uh, providing business model design, corporate mentorship, and access to investment. Uh, in the last eight years, we've supported 58 businesses um, enabled access to $22 million of investments into these sanitation businesses. Um, just to note that there is no fee or charge for the program. And upon completing the program, the alumni also keep uh, continuing to receive ongoing support whenever they need it. Um, we support all kinds of businesses across the sanitation value chain. So that includes businesses around toilets and toilet accessories, um, human waste collection, transport, treatment, and reuse. Um, menstrual waste, menstrual hygiene management, um, and of course, technology applications in sanitation, um, you know, which which drive efficiency or preventative health care. So we support a very wide range of sanitation businesses. Now, I would like to hand over to Maria to, uh, to share a little bit about um, where all we work globally. Thanks a lot, Ashwarya. Hello everyone, my name is Maria Cueva and I'm the accelerator manager based in Peru, LATAM. 
We have supported entrepreneurs across over 20 countries all over the world. We support entrepreneurs primarily in developing markets. Not just entrepreneurs, but we have a wide network in every part of the world that entrepreneurs get access to, specifically a sanitation-focused network with a strong representation from the private sector, from governments, and from NGOs and academics too. Our global network is in fact a platform for collaboration between small businesses and large businesses, as well as between businesses and governments. If you join us, you get access to this network of collaboration. Please, next slide. Thank you. Corporate mentorship is an integral part of our accelerator. There are great synergies between SMEs and corporates. SMEs represent innovation and corporates represent scale. On one hand, SMEs bring highly valuable innovation that solve problems. On the other hand, corporates have the ability, experience, and the skill sets to scale innovations to serve millions. In our accelerator, entrepreneurs benefit from mentorship by corporate leaders. These corporate leaders share valuable knowledge and experience around marketing, branding, operations, IT, and more. Since the potential between SMEs and corporates are strong, these mentoring relationships often seed longer term partnerships too. Now, Lindelani will continue with this presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maria. So there are um, essentially two tracks of uh, mentorship in the accelerator program. The first is the corporate mentorship that has been, has been explained by my colleague, Maria. The second is mentorship from the accelerator team, which I will explain more um, about now. So in the accelerator program, over the course of a year, we will cover a few things. In the first quarter, we look at understanding your business model. Uh, through conducting uh, unit economics analysis, analyzing your gross margins so that we can optimize the business and also understand the overall value proposition. And then in the second quarter, we explore pathways to profitability through conducting financial projections for the business, looking at what the year ahead should look like for the business and also exploring potential opportunities for uh, collaborations. In the third quarter, we explore the investability of the business. We assist you in preparing pitch decks that will be presented to investors. And we also finalize the partnerships that will have been explored earlier in the year. In the fourth quarter, this is where the work plan that you had set for yourself in the beginning of the year will then be complete. And at this point, you will be graduating with potential partnerships and investments. I would like to, at this point, invite Venu uh, to tell us a bit more about uh, the Accelerator program content. Thanks, Lindlani, and hello, everyone. Uh, just to give you a few examples of the kind of analysis and the work uh, that we do as a part of the Accelerator program. Uh, and this part deals with uh, basically understanding your business model, understanding the scalability uh, of the business model, what are the challenges to scalability? Um, and then ultimately, you know, what is the investment story uh, of your business? Uh, you know, that the compelling investment story uh, of your business. So uh, you can see here uh, a very broad uh, kind of brush analysis of uh, what we do in the quarter one, which is the unit economics. Uh, analysis. Um, here we try and understand what is the unit uh, business uh, that you are building and therefore as the business scales up it can be thought of uh, as basically replicating these units uh, multiple times you know and so having clarity on what that one unit is and what are the economics of that one unit is really helpful as we chart out uh, the scale roadmap as we chart out the growth roadmap over the next uh, couple of years. And what we see through this analysis, uh, we, sh we are sharing here some of the learnings uh, during this analysis, is that uh, business models in sanitation uh, don't always start off uh, with a very, uh, very strong gross margin. Uh, and yet, uh, as they grow, 
there are multiple opportunities uh, ahead of them to increase their gross margin. And you can see that uh, the three opportunities that we've uh, identified here are uh, optimizing the business model. I mean, is there a more efficient way of doing things, of delivering value to the customer? Uh, and then over the years, as the business increases, uh, you would organically become better at uh, costs. Uh, you might do the same thing at a lower cost. Uh, you might become better at uh, more higher quality of revenue, uh, etc. as you learn more and more about your customers, about your markets. <clears throat> and what that does is that that creates a kind of positive momentum on the gross margin side. And, uh, and it allows you some room uh, for price easing uh, as well. And, and as you uh, start lowering the prices without compromising on, on a good uh, gross margin percentage, uh, then two effects uh, simultaneously happen. One is that uh, more and more adoption uh, of your product, uh, but that combined with uh, with now that the price is lowered, you know, there is an ex extra demand, additional demand that makes itself available <clears throat> because more people can now afford uh, these services. And what we see is that as both these effects work in tandem, uh, the impact, uh, impact can grow exponentially. I mean, there's an indicative figure here of about 219%. Uh, but but you'll see that uh, very qualitatively, uh, just more adoption and more affordability uh, really, really drastically increases the demand for your service. And of course, as a result, the impact that you've created uh, in the markets that you serve. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> And then uh, we, once we've defined the economics of at the unit level, uh, and we've understood what opportunities exist uh, to increase those increase those economics uh, over the over the uh, medium to long term, uh, we turn our attention to to the business projection for the next three to five years, which we call pathway to profitability. Not all businesses, as you as you I'm sure understand, not all businesses start off as being profitable. Uh, but as they scale up, as they grow, as they serve more and more customers, uh, become better at managing costs, become better at realizing revenues, uh, they become uh, profitable. And so our work uh, around this segment really uh, seeks to explore uh, what is that point at which the business turns uh, profitable on a net basis, that the business is able to not only cover its direct cost or cost of gross margins, but also uh, cover its overheads and fixed costs, uh, etc. And the unique thing that we do in the sector, uh, realizing that uh, you know it's a very intensive impact-oriented uh, sector, the unique thing we do is that we we do not limit ourselves. Uh, during this work only to financial uh, metrics or only to financial projections. Uh, but we look at three other variables, three other uh, labels or three other means of describing the growth of your business. And those three are uh, operational parameters, uh, which is, you know, basically answering the question, you know, without using revenue figures, without using profit figures, is there a way for you to describe the growth of your business uh, over the over the next few years? And uh, many of you would choose uh, perhaps number of people uh, that are working. Many of you would choose the number of cities that you have operations in, or some some might choose many countries that you have uh, your operations on. So, operational parameters basically involves non-financial metrics or non-financial uh, descriptions uh, of a company's growth and and it becomes really important in a in a highly social impact driven sector uh, like sanitation uh, the second thing that we track uh, is the social impact so we we link uh, your impact to the un sustainable development goals uh, although 
you might be a sanitation businesses, often we have found that uh, the impact that you end up creating is actually quite diverse. Uh, for example, sanitation businesses could also increase livelihood opportunities, could lead to job creation, uh, etc. And so we track the impact matrix and we find that they're very closely linked to revenue growth, uh, which is quite understandable. And so during our work, you can see uh, the impact metric flowing side by side uh, with the other financial metrics uh, over the course of the few years. And then finally, the third uh, measure is, uh, is more qualitative, which is the strategic themes. Uh, you know, we want to also capture, uh, you know, what phase uh, the business is going through currently. Is the phase team building, for example? Is the phase new product development? Uh, is the phase product launch, uh, is the phase international expansion. And so we capture these uh, qualitative strategic themes as well uh, alongside your financial projections. Uh, a, it gives uh, the founder a very good visibility on the roadmap uh, of their business. Uh, but it also tells uh, potential investors and potential partners on why the business is behaving uh, the way it is uh, you know, when we look at purely the financial uh, financial metrics. So this is something that we uniquely do in our pathway to profitability study, which is that, uh, you know, not only do we describe the projections in a financial uh, metric uh, approach, but we also seek to describe it from, from a non-financial perspective along operational parameters, social impact, uh, and strategic themes. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> And then once these two modules are complete, uh, then we quickly turn our attention to, you know, what is it that uh, is required to, uh, to build a good investment story uh, around your business and its growth plans. And here on the investability support, uh, you know, we look at the, uh, we help you in preparing the, the investment memo or the pitch deck. Uh, on the other side, uh, we also regularly engage with investors uh, who are active in sanitation uh, area or active in adjacent areas like agriculture, renewable energy, health, uh, and, are, and have funds. Uh, so we, we bring a highly curated uh, list of active investors in our engagement process. Uh, so that makes for more precise, more effective conversations between SMEs uh, and investors. Um, you will see that during our financial projections work, we, we sort of work to define exactly what is the investment required uh, for the next 12 month period or for the next 18 month period. So the financial projections that we discussed in the last slide uh, will give you a near accurate uh, idea of how much investment you should ask uh, for and for how much, for how long a time period, and where is all that investment going? And these are the three top questions uh, that investors want to know as well uh, as you present uh, present to them. So we organize the investor forum uh, every quarter. Um, I, our next investor forum is perhaps uh, I think in May. Uh, and we also organize an investment committee where we work with global uh, investors who want to set up funds for sanitation, who want to set up financial mechanisms uh, for sanitation. And so our investability support is really two pronged. Uh, one is that it encourages direct investments into SMEs. Uh, you saw our impact figures earlier that Ashwarya talked about uh, that we've facilitated so far about $22 million of direct investments uh, into SMEs. Uh, but the second uh, piece of our investment strategy is also that we enable financial mechanisms. So we work with groups of investors and we, we provide them our learnings of working with SMEs and we help them work with them uh, in creating really customized financial mechanisms uh, that are well suited for sanitation sector. The one case in point here is, is the asset management uh, uh, vehicle that we started uh, scoping out in 2020. 
and and that work is now uh, taking a more concrete form uh, this year and we have uh, some smes within our portfolio working on the asset management uh, model as a result of that uh, scoping and we are uh, now looking towards creating also a small size equity fund uh, with our investor partners uh, because we feel that the level of equity in sanitation is, is currently uh, scarce and something that needs to be addressed uh, so that SMEs can grow, uh, grow smoothly. <clears throat> so those are uh, three examples of the kind of work we do, the unit economics, uh, pathway to profitability and investability support. Um, happy to take any questions. Uh, otherwise, I'll pass it back to uh, Lidlani. Invite uh, Eric um, uh, to, to engage uh, the entrepreneurs now. So you have been hearing from the accelerator team. Um, talk to us about the opportunities uh, for your circular economy business. Now it's time to hear from um, some of the beneficiaries. Um, you'll be hearing from Alan Lumini. And then you'll be hearing from some of our 2023 cohorts uh, and tell you about what the journey is so far and what it has been um, for our alumni. Um, I mentioned 2023 uh, cohort, which means that sometime last year, around this time, they successfully completed the applications and then have successfully gone through the evaluation processes and are in the program now. So if you are listening to me right now, please go do well to complete your application if you haven't already done so or if you've already started then kindly uh, complete it because you have just some few days till the process is ended so i would quickly mention out our guests and then i'll give them the opportunity um, to introduce themselves so what i'll do is i'll run through the names and then the countries they are coming from and then I'll give them each the opportunity to tell us more about themselves, tell us more about their businesses and how they have enjoyed the support from the Toilet Work Coalition. So I would gladly start with uh, Nicolas Courier. Maybe Nicolas can give us a whiff. Uh, Nicolas is uh, from Rwanda. And then from Rwanda, I'll move to Ghana. Um, Diodon Kwame Aguda. Yes, that's a wave, thank you. And then to Rudy Wahu from Indonesia. And finally, Sarika from India. Great. So let me start with you, uh, Nicolas. Kindly tell us a bit about yourself and then uh, about Pete Bidura. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, my name is uh, Nicolas Kulia. I'm the managing Pit Vidura, Pit Pampas Limited. So, Pit Pampas, we are based here in Kigali, Rwanda. Uh, we are a sanitation business. We offer pit latrine uh, emptying services for uh, low income households, but also a septic tank for the corporate or institutional clients. Yeah, so Pit Vidura was on the, was on the uh, accelerator program in 2020. Uh, a tough year uh, when COVID-19 and lockdown became a reality here in Rwanda. Uh, but uh, uh, it was uh, a good, uh, uh, and I think uh, a change, uh, a change in Pit Vidura because uh, we had at our uh, disposal, we worked very closely with the venue. Uh, we also had uh, Daigo from Lixil as our mentor. Uh, we covered uh, we covered a lot and we learned a lot from uh, um, uh, from financial uh, financial and uh, uh, operational uh, improvements. You can be able to imagine, um, uh, you know, with the lockdown, the services are low, the business is low, and needed this support uh, to be able to uh, to navigate uh, the tough year. That we had we didn't uh, our business didn't go down you know many business closed at that time of due to covid and everything 
although our business was a uh, part of uh, essential services, everything else was good. But uh, we had a good uh, support from uh, from uh, from venue uh, with Daigo uh, from Leeds. We took an opportunity. You know, we were offering P thirteen emptying services. We had we, we had uh, we had for uh, for the past had an issue of accessing the sato pans. Uh, so we struck a deal. We took the opportunity. We struck a deal and were able to get uh, sato pans for a very cheap and a distributor price, which we could not be able to uh, to access in the past. And we are able to be able to sell to the households who are doing improvement of their pizza thing after emptying. So it's a lot we can be able to say. Uh, talk about uh, um, access to connect to other service providers in the TBC family who are also in our business, able to, ability to share our learnings, challenges, opportunities. So it was a it was a great year. But still, uh, after the after we graduated. Uh, we are still uh, we are still part of actually for the for the last uh, few months since starting from this year, I have been back to back with Ashura and Venue uh, <laughs> because of access to financials, uh, access to the funding. So they are always sending us the the opportunities out there. Uh, we are able to follow our station market due to regular communication from the TBC. Uh, they are supporting us in assisting to prepare for the uh, for the uh, pitch deck presentation in uh, investors forum. So I think it has been uh, from year 2020 till now uh, being part of a TBC family. It has always been uh, a great. Uh, we have gained a lot, and we are still learning and uh, enjoying. I think being part of the TBC family. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. So Nicholas mentioned venue, support and working with venue and Ashara. Um, pre when they were in the program and even uh, as an alumni um, to date, the, the benefits and the support they are receiving in terms of um, funding and looking for investments. And also he touched on his uh, his work with the mentor who was um, Daigo in, in Unilever and how that uh, relationship um, helped him to um, acquire um, some support in terms of acquiring subtle pants and which helped them to expand um, their business uh, during the lockdown uh, period. So wonderful, Nicholas. I'll, I'll come back to you uh, with some few questions. Now, um, Diodon, if, if you are there, um, can I employ you to tell us about who you are um, as an entrepreneur and then your business? Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, so my name is Diodon Kwame Abuda. I am the CEO and founder of Washkin. Um, so Washkin, um, what we do is uh, we supply biodigester-based toilets uh, to low-income and underserved uh, populace in um, Accra uh, currently. And so um, we joined um, TBC um, uh, this year uh, to say, and um, so far it has been amazing and spot on in terms of uh, the experience. So, um, as she said, so we started uh, with developing a, a work plan where uh, it was back and forth. And um, I mean, the team was really dedicated uh, to ensure that um, I get the best plan for us to work on. So right after that, uh, we move on to the unit economics where, um, yes, the, the numbers were uh, really cracked, um, which for me is is very important because then it it helps me to uh, look at the, the business um, uh, on a whole. Um, so, and then um, I'm also um, doing a funding application 
And I must say that the, the team has been uh, really helpful in this also. Um, so there has been dedicated uh, feedback from um, Eric, from uh, uh, Lindilani, and uh, venue, all of them has been very support supportive in making sure that um, I get the best application to the the funding uh, agency. Um, so for me, I, I mean, it's it's been uh, the, the experience has been great um, in that apart from being a, a dedicated uh, experience, uh, it's customized to my need as an entrepreneur and um, also relevant to, to my needs. And there's one unique thing that um, I like about TBC uh, is uh, when, when we, uh, we started, uh, before we started the engagement, I mean, we were sent um, um, NDA and um, 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 yeah, I mean, NDA to, to sign, which for me, uh, makes me to look at TBC as uh, a very responsible organization who understand the, the needs of um, uh, entrepreneurs and our challenges. I mean, most of the time, I mean, these are the challenges when we are uh, entering into a program like this. Uh, how will our um, innovations be handled? And I mean, I, I was really surprised and uh, it's, it's, it's really a, a plus. Um, uh, as far as uh, TBC um, as a data program is, is concerned. So, um, yeah, so this is what I, I, I can say about my experience so far. And I know th there are a lot that uh, are ahead for us to cover, but yes, it has been fast, uh, fantastic and, and spot on. Thank you. Fantastic, Deirdre. Um And then I'll quickly move to Sarika. Um, Sarika, so tell us, what, what does Chrisa do? Uh, you are based in India. Um, tell us a bit, uh, for somebody who is listening or, or watching us live and uh, is interested in what Chrisa does, kindly tell us a bit about yourself and then um, what Chrisa does. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarika. I am from India. Uh, I am I'm founder of Chrisa and I'm part of... Uh, Toilet Board Coalition 2023, this year's accelerator program. So Kresa is basically a creative sanitation. We are developing world's only hot water flushable sanitary pads in order to solve health, environmental and disposal issues causing by current feminine hygiene products. So we have developed sanitary napkins which get dissolved immediately in hot water and it converts into a slurry which can be a flushable one. We have initially launched our product uh, on alpha version of the product on our website. And now we are helping on the, we are launching our commercial production very soon. So this toilet board program is really helping us to shape up our startup in terms of business perspective. So being an innovator, uh, you have all aspects uh, in terms of innovation, product development, but business development and business, uh, you know, how to shape up your business, what challenges you face. These all things, you know, they, uh, this toilet board is really helping us in terms of, you know, uh, work plan, unit economics, business development. Also, I've got amazing mentors from uh, Kimberly Clark, Shayon and Marcella who are helping me in, you know, pricing, strategy, various certification that we require. We also have weekly calls uh, in India with Vedu sir and Aishwarya that really help us to, you know, face our every week weekly challenges. You know, someone is listening and, you know, finding, giving a solution to our day to day problems. So this program really helped us so far to, you know, shape up our startups from but what, what, whichever we were in December till now, I can really find a difference, big difference in our startup. Thank you, Sarika. And it's a positive difference. I, I, yes. I must say. Great. Yes, Thanks. yes. <laughs> Great. Okay, so to, to Rudy, um, so you are based in, in Indonesia. Indonesia. And, uh, yes. And your, your, your business covers a, a lot, right, from identifying locations to construction and operations of toilets. Yeah. Um, can you share a little about your business model and how you have been further developing this during your time uh, in the program? Okay, thank you, Eric. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rudy. 
from Indonesia. I am uh, CEO and founder of Jamban.id. Uh, actually, what we do is we are developing the integrated platform from hardware and software to support the sanitation, where our holding company uh, become the asset owner of the uh, integrated toilet, uh, high-tech, and uh, local wisdom with Indonesian culture. And the subsidiary of our, of our holding company right now is... Uh, we equip the technology to supervise the maintenance of the toilet that we, are, we have owned. And we have joined in TB Accelerator since uh, early years. And we are very, very happy that uh, we have a tremendous benefit since joining the Accelerator. We are given advice from the worldwide mentors like a Venu and Aishwarai that have a worldwide experience in sanitation sector. And we do uh, weekly calls, we discuss and we share the, the idea and get the new uh, point of view. And then, and also uh, TBC uh, give us the uh, opportunity to also uh, get advice from the local advisor from Lixil Indonesia, from Mr. Santa and Mr. Pepen every week. And, and also we have uh, given broad opportunity to able to collaborate with all stakeholders of sanitation that connect with the BC ecosystem. That's very, very uh, great. And we also get, uh, every week, we get a lot of collaborative advice from improving our business model concept to become the more perfect and also to better financial management system and also the impact assessment. So our business in German ID become more attractive and more uh, sustainable and a lot of uh, potential investor attract with our business right now to build a better center in Indonesia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. Uh, yeah. I'm going to circle back to uh, Nicholas. Um, so Nicholas, um, could you share a little more about the work you are recently doing now? So we understand you are an alumni, you were, uh, you were, you were in the accelerator when COVID struck. And of course it did have some aspect of your, your business. Um, I'm interested to, to learn um, about the current things you are doing as an alumni and uh, what uh, kind of support are you receiving um, from the Toilet Board Coalition uh, in terms of your financials and then your investment side? Uh, thank you, Felix. So I think uh, currently, uh, currently we have been looking uh, now to the future. Uh, we have been working with Ashura and Venue about five to ten years to come, where we want our business to be. Uh, we did. We have done projections, unit economics, uh, uh, path to growth in terms of service provider. We do emptying service. Uh, we don't want to stay in Kigali. We also want to to go ahead. Uh, we are looking into launching a, a, a online platform in uh, maybe two to three years to come, but we are already planning right now. So I think currently we are looking to part to scale. Uh, uh, in our next, we, we are viewing our 2029, 20, 2028 20, in our eyes, where we want, uh, where we, uh, want Pete Vidura to be. And uh, I think... I think planning to the uh, what you, what, where we want to go, where we want to be in 2020, 2029, 20, 20, I think it will start today. So that's the work that we are doing. And I think to do that, that I think we, should support you. So we are focusing on this uh, yes. And, and you know, you don't make so much money when you are uh, uh, this low-income area. So there have to be uh, uh, integration of either financial support and business expansion. So uh, they have been, uh, we have been uh, back to back with Ashroa in access financing, uh, asset financing and uh, so forth. And uh, she was the, she had been sharing with us the financial uh, opportunities which are there, helping us to be able to, to, uh, to prepare to meet the standards for those uh, access to those financials and i think we are i can both say we are in a 
better play in good parts of the, uh, the TBC. Awesome, awesome, thank you. And then Diodon okay. had mentioned already um, about the support he's, 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 he's getting um, from the accelerator team um, in his um, uh, investment uh, application uh, drive. But I, I wanted to ask you, Diodon, um, you have a mentor, right? And um, I want to find out what role uh, is the mentor playing in your business, in your business growth, and what has surprised you ab about it? Yeah, so um, the, the mentor um, uh, is, is supporting me with um, um, customized um, advice. And, and so far, we've had um, a meeting, which, uh, of course, uh, Eric, you were, you were also part of that meeting. And um, I was really... Um, yeah, amazed at um, how uh, the the mentor really uh, dedicated his time and experience to delve into uh, the challenges that we are facing, especially with uh, marketing and converting uh, sales leads. Um, as you may be aware, I mean, as you are. Hi, can, can you hear Diodon? I cannot hear from my end. Rudy, can you give me a wave if you can hear Diodon? Perhaps a little technical hitch on his end. Um, okay, then let, let me move to Sarika then. Hi. Yes. So tell us a bit about your, your mentors um, at Kimberley and, and Clark. Okay. So uh, in, from Kimberley Clark, I've received uh, mentors Marcella and Shayon. And uh, actually, they're helping us uh, in terms of various aspects, uh, such as marketing strategy, branding strategy. Now, like I mentioned, we are in the stage of final uh, commercial product launch, we, where we aim to launch our product on D2C platform, as well as we are working on B2B channel where we provide our end-to-end -end solution. So in that perspective, they're helping us to find a right, uh, you know, marketing uh, channel as well as the uh, uh, branding strategies as well as they're helping us with packaging various certification international certification that we uh, go for so uh, so my suggestion is like you know whatever uh, you know it, it depends on how much ever you can ask for they are ready to help me that's the best thing i found out like whenever we, we meet once in a month but whenever i have any doubts any certain questions then i can just drop them an email and i get immediate feedback from them about so i don't have to wait you know to, uh, till the time or next meeting so that's the amazing part which i uh, you know found out uh, in this uh, mentorship so they are ready to help us at you know uh, at any uh, stage at any uh, problems or you know uh, we have or any challenges we have thank you thank you and uh, Rudy? Hi. Yes. Uh, about our mentors in Indonesia. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, our mentor in Indonesia is from Lixil, Indonesia. Uh, I mentorized with Mr. Santa and Mr. Pepen, two mentors in, in one time. And the exciting thing is, it's not only mentoring, it's, it's more than mentoring. They, we can discuss about the business model and also we can discuss more about the long-term strategic partnership with uh, with our mentor a company Lixil in Lixil Indonesia maybe in worldwide and then what i feel what 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 we get from the tb accelerator with mentorship with local company is uh we can connect with most of uh important stakeholder in Indonesia so our program and our uh uh, ecosystem that we built in Jamba.id, we can move together with Lexi Indonesia in national wide. Pro before we, we join in TB Accelerator, we only built in some city, 
but after we join with the Peace Accelerator, we, we do some parallel mentorship and strategic uh, business together with Elixir to become the national wide of our uh, program. At time. That's very, very great. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'm about to ask you about the last round of questions, but then I, I'd want to encourage those of us who are listening in and joining in. If you have any questions for uh, panelists, uh, please feel free to drop it in the comment section. Uh, also, there is um, a section after this uh, part where we will take uh, questions. But if you already have questions for the panelists, I would encourage you to um, drop it in the comment section. Um, Nicholas, I just want to find out. So what is that one favorite thing um, you would say about the, the program, you know, to um, the newcomers um, in there? What would that favorite thing that you want to share from your perspective as an alumni uh, of the Accelerator program? What's that one thing that uh, was your favorite thing that you would want to share? Uh, I think one of my favorite thing will be access uh, to the support. You know, uh, uh, you know, our, we are ve we are very far away here in Kigali, but uh, I'm comfortable that if I get if I get stuck somewhere in the work that I do, I can be able to go on WhatsApp. Hey, Ashwa, can I? Can we schedule half a net? And like uh, uh, like uh, uh, as Arika say, like you get like it was like no, give me a schedule for maybe uh, three to two weeks to come. You can be able to get you are able to get a, a real time support uh, in any challenge that you face. You know that to me is not uh, is, I cannot take that for granted. You know, having to take that uh, professional uh, uh, support just for. Be, sending somebody or maybe requesting it and you get in real time i think that some it's not something that i i can take it for granted i think that one that is one of the major thing and i really thank uh, uh the the uh Ashura venue for the support that they have been giving sometimes they ask how many business do you support like am i taking most of your time they say no 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 Let, let's uh, <laughs> Let's, uh, let's solve your problem and then don't worry about it. I'm just like worrying about the way, the work that I'm giving her, like the support. Um, I usually feel like I'm taking too much of the time, but they are willing uh, to go to the next level and make sure you succeed. I think uh, us to succeed is one of the, uh, something they are, um, they are happy to, to, to see us succeed. So I think I can't be able to think of any better uh, than that. Awesome, real time support, and we are here for you to succeed. Indeed, that is that is what the program is is here for. Um, I want to thank you all for your your time, and I'll quickly pass it back to Lindelani uh, to take us through the rest of the event. Thank you all. Rick, and thank you very much to um, all the, the entrepreneurs for sharing their journey with us and um, uh, and what uh, type of support they have received from uh, the toilet board coalition uh, it was it was quite nice to hear those um, uh, those nice things and i'm hoping that um uh, who uh, the, the the entrepreneurs who are listening in and who are watching um are going to be encouraged um after hearing that we are available uh, and you will get um even even after graduating actually you will get um uh, real-time support um, with no problem and you don't even have to as nicola said you don't even have to uh, book in two weeks in advance or um, something like that. Yeah, you just shoot a WhatsApp and we are there for you. So uh, at this point, uh, what I would like to do is to take you through the process that uh, you will engage in as a potential applicant. Um, so this is the process that you will engage in uh, from now until um, 
next year, end of the year, uh, if you had been successful uh, through um, the selection process. So you will notice that the process essentially is uh, a two-year process, but I need to emphasize this. The um, accelerator program itself is a one-year program. So uh, essentially what this means, the reason why you are seeing the two years uh, in the uh, on the screen right now is simply because in the first year, which is the year that we are in, um, which is the year that we have the call for applications open right now, uh, you will apply and then we will um, we will get your application and then we will shortlist you. We will engage you if um, uh, there is some information that is missing. And then we essentially that we will interview you. This is, this is what will be happening in the first year. And then in the second year, um, you will then um, begin, if you are successful, you will then begin the accelerator program itself. So uh, what I, the reason why I wanted to clarify that is because I don't want uh, you thinking that this is a two-year, uh, a two-year program? No, no, it's a one-year program. It's just that in the first year you will be engaged in the application process. Um, so uh, let me go through the process. You will notice that um, the process is a two-year process. Where in one year you are called for application, and you are currently and we currently we are receiving the applications. Uh, this call for applications will close on the twenty-eighth of April, and at this point the rating and short listing process will begin. Uh, this will be happening um, uh, internally. Uh, this is when we'll be reviewing uh, the applications, looking at whether it is a business uh, it, that is in the developing world, uh, it is a business that is a business for profit, uh, whether it is at growth stage uh, and whether it is scalable, we'll be looking at, um, at such criteria. As I've mentioned, that you may be contacted um, to for, for additional information. If maybe in the application uh, there's some missing information, we'll contact you. Um, after the selection process, this will result in um, the, the short list. And this short list will then be presented to our steering committee at around um, around July. And then the steering committee will review and then conduct interviews with uh, you as the applicant uh, by say um, uh, September and after the interviews are done the steering committee will make their final selection and you um, an announcement will then be made um, by uh, November uh, 20th, uh, 20th day uh, November 19th so after this uh, which will then be uh, the following year which is 2024 uh, you will then begin working on um, uh, your work plan, which is the plan that you will be executing for the rest of the year. Um, I, I hope that this, this was clear. First year, which is this year we are in, we are simply just engaging in the application process, contacting you, having interviews and such. And then if you're successful in the second year, that is when you engage in um, the accelerator program itself for one full year. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Now, in terms of um, the next steps uh, from this point, uh, the applications, as I've mentioned, will close on uh, the 28th of April. And then the application link is available on the Toilet Board Coalition's website. Um, and then after that, the, um, the evaluation and shortlisting process um, that I spoke about will then run between May and uh, October. And then the final selection um, and the announcements will then be uh, made on, on toilet day. And then uh, after that, the accelerator program will then begin and run for uh, from January to December next year. And it's like this. So after um, hearing everything that um, we have um, we have presented. Uh, you have heard what the Toilet Board Coalition um, is, uh, who we are, um, and then you heard uh, about the kind of support that we uh, we give to SMEs. And then after that, you heard about um, you heard from uh, entrepreneurs who have gotten uh, uh, support from the Toilet Board Coalition, and those who are currently getting support from the Toilet Board Coalition. Um, so at this point, um, even if you are watching a recording of 
um, of this event, uh, please feel free. It doesn't matter which channel you are watching this from. Uh, please feel free to jot down your questions in the in the chat section or uh, in the comments section. We will be available uh, to respond to any question that you may have had um, after after watching after watching this video. Um, uh, thank you. Um, please go to the next slide. All right. Thank you so much for. Um, uh, going through this presentation with us and um, uh, hearing what we have to share as the toilet board coalition. Uh, one thing I would like to uh, to mention is that um, uh, the applications, the toilet board coalition actually has another program as well that is focused on Latin um, America. Uh, and this program, uh, the applications for this program are also open. Um, the countries that this program um, for now uh, is focusing on are Guatemala, uh, Honduras, and Peru as well. So if you are also interested, or rather if you are from uh, from that region, uh, please feel free as well to uh, visit our website and um, um, and you will get all the information there. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you very much for um, uh, watching and, and listening to us. Um, and again, I would like to express this. Please feel free to uh, leave your questions. Um, treat this as a live. Right? Please feel free to, to leave your questions in the, in the chat section, and we will definitely uh, respond to them. Thank you so much.